Greetings, everyone. Pete here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. And today is also Viewer Appreciation Day. So we've got on the Zoom line with us here, Rob Lasanti, longtime viewer and reader of Sea of Tranquility, also a fellow New Yorker. What's happening, my friend? How are you? Good morning, Peter. How are you? I'm doing good. I wish it was still a weekend, but you know, another week. Here we go, right? I know. They're flying by. At least this week's going to be a little warmer. So we so got something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, I'm ready to say goodbye to the snow. So uh, apparently oh, yeah. that, that's going to happen this week. So uh, that's exactly. a good thing. That's a good thing. So today we're going to talk about the brand new release came out, what, about a month or so ago on AFM Records, the 12th studio album from Sweden's Evergrey Escape of the Phoenix. I've got the CD, the Digipack. Rob's got the uh, limited edition LP there. Look at that bad boy. Huh? It's actually an art book. It's got the uh, it's got the CD with the bonus track on it. It has the actual art book and then it has a vinyl there's a vinyl back here seven inch vinyl limited edition also so uh it's a really nice package really beautiful yeah that's great how many uh how many do they make of those i think a hundred i'm not exactly sure but that's what i read get them while they're hot people if you don't have one and you want one you better act now because if you wait a couple minutes that might be gone so um I actually think they're sold out to be honest yeah that, that's not surprising with 100 i could have sworn i saw tom write that in uh, one of the uh posts that he had so so i spoke to tom a couple months back uh about the upcoming album the album hadn't quite hit yet and uh you know we talked about you know what's new with it what's different and you know my impression of this new album it's like uh you know you don't get any massive surprises i think most people know the sound and style of evergrey and it's totally an evergrey album but man yeah. i don't know about you rob but what i'm amazed about this band year after year after year album after album after album is they they have this way of delivering the goods in this style of music which again they're, they're kind of hard to categorize are they are they power metal gothic metal progressive metal i mean they kind of do a little bit of everything but they don't rely on a lot of the same types of things that a lot of other bands that float in and out of these genres do i mean they're just immediately catchy songs with emotional vocals they're heavy they're atmospheric they take you on a journey and like every song on here is just so memorable from the first time you hear it and it, i'm just amazed that these guys knock it out of the park like every single album like they do my my feeling is and i've been following evergrey since uh, 2001 and uh, in fact, I, I probably read a review on, on the website to see Tranquility, you know? Yeah, because <laughs> we, how... we reviewed the very first one, with, so it's going way back, yeah. And, and if you remember back in those days, there was no Facebook, Instagram, we had uh, MySpace. Yep. MySpace is where I found a lot of music that I didn't even know about in the early 2000s. And uh, this was one of the bands that when I discovered them, from the moment I heard In Search of Truth, I was hooked. Yeah. I was, I mean, still probably probably my favorite album of all time from them. But like you said, uh, you know, the last four albums, you know, with hymns and then uh, <clears throat> uh, Atlantic also and uh, A Storm Within and all that, th those albums have turned it up a notch, I feel personally. Uh, Production wise with Jacob Hansen, of course, it's oh, incredible. Yeah. He, he's very, actually, I know Tom's talked about that too, but you know, he's turned it up a notch with his production and mix, mixing and mastering and uh, just the writing, the, as you said about the emotion, the thing that got me about this album, that it's, it's like a, uh, there's ups and downs. So you get really like this heavy bombastic intro the first song, for example, for an outsider, and then, you know, you get into uh, stories. Stories was the kind of song when I first heard it. I had tears almost in my eyes. It was it was just just so beautiful, and it was it just there's something about between Tom's vocals and the passages that just touch you know touch me personally as an Evergrey fan. And I think I find that with a lot of Evergrey, we have an Evergrey clan on Facebook. You know, there's a bunch of us, including the members of the band. And, wow. you know, always talking about this kind of stuff and just it, there's something about their music that is different than other music of metal or rock, you know what I mean? And uh, like you said, it, you can't really categorize it. But for me, uh, I have to say that this is probably 
I don't, you know, each album I keep saying, well, this one's greater than this one, well, but there's something different about that one, you know. I mean, hymns for me really, I, I still love hymns. I still, it's still on my uh, play all the time. I'm always listening to that album. I never got tired of it. Um, that, that's how it is with Evergreen for me. So, but this album, like you said, you know, it, it's got the heavy, heavy songs, the bombastic songs, uh, almost thrashy at some parts, especially like uh, Leaden Saints. What a great song. Yep. Oh my God, I love that song. Uh, Dandelion Cypher, Escape of the Phoenix, Eternal Nocturnal. And then you got the stuff like Absence of Sun, You From Me, very emotional, melancholic. I mean, just amazing, amazing. Like you said, it's a journey. Yeah, it totally is. And uh, I, I, you know, you, you mentioned it <clears throat> really well <clears throat> about the peaks and valleys thing, right? They, they love how they start you off on a track and, and Stories is a great uh, example of that, where it's nice and mellow and atmospheric in the beginning and then they hit you with some heavy riffing in this nice heavier section, drama and, and a lot of power. And then they kind of settle back in again. I love Where August Mourns, I think is so catchy. I mean, you know, like in a perfect world, some of these tunes... Could, I mean, could you just like go back in time, like to like the mid late eighties, early nineties? I could totally see some of these tunes on uh, Headbangers Ball and on MTV. You know, putting together cool videos, which they they make videos all the time of some of their stuff. Which yeah. is the title yeah. track, Escape of the Phoenix, is so good. Um, you from You is great. I mean, there's so many killer songs on here. The keyboards are nicely understated. Uh, you know, you got a lot of the down tune riffing going on. You got plenty of shredding, but this is not you know, Dream Theater or Symphony X or that type of thing. You don't get these big, long solos and everything. This is really song-based music. And speaking of uh, uh, Dream Theater, you got uh, James Labrie on here. Oh, yeah, we didn't nice, even mention that. <laughs> which is a beautiful addition, you know, yeah. to, to the album. Not that you need him, but it's nice to hear that, you know, that uh, dual, the voices, uh, you know, with their vocals. And it, I just really, this album is really something else. And I've listened to it now for, since I got it, I've had played it probably 20 times, at least, maybe more. I don't know. I, you know, I don't count sometimes. I could, you know, there's a lot of times I go out in the woods and I take a walk and I just have it on and I just, you know, it's just such a great album. It really is. Yeah. And, and man, those vocal harmonies. You know, I, t I told Tom himself, I said, you know, you've got one of the most unique voices in all of metal. And mm. it's, it's, the, it's the voice that you hear it and it just it hits you right here. And you can tell he's pouring everything into the vocals. And uh, I think it's one of the things that makes the band so unique. And, you know, it was the, the real reason why when I heard he had joined Redemption, I was like, I don't know how I feel about that because yeah. Tom is so much a part. I mean, you know, could you have Evergrey without Tom England? You couldn't. No, I mean, when and, you, right. When you hear his voice, you think Evergrey. You know, right. And and is Tom in Redemption? I, I've talked to plenty of people who like they, they can't listen to Redemption now because it's too much Tom because he is such a powerful voice uh, mm -hmm. and, and force. Right. But um, but yeah, this this is great. I, I love the artwork, too. It's just oh, really yeah. fantastic. But yeah, the artwork is beautiful. I mean, uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Gianno Nikos, I think, is, is the uh, designer of this. But he's re and then you know, like I said, the inside. Let's see if I can get get it in there. It's so hard to get. <laughs> wow, yeah, it's, a, it's a nice looking package. Yeah, it's definitely beautiful. And um, you know, you're talking about uh, and the solo, though, especially like on stories. That solo kind of remind me of like how we did on all all I have from the last uh, from Atlantic. It was just a beautiful solo. I know Tom's influenced a little bit of Floyd there. You can hear it. You know what I mean? A little bit of Gilmore. But um, oh, I tell you, I, I just never, I'm always saying to myself, well, how can they top the last album? There's no way. You know, you, you, that's what I keep saying. And then they do. And then, you know, it's, and sometimes you got to settle in. It takes like a week, two weeks, and you really start listening and you have to absorb the album. It's not just you just play it and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's so many little nuances that you pick up on later on. And that's what I love about this band. Yeah, exactly. And they, they've been, you mentioned it before, they've been on quite a roll. For me, I think the only, and I know a lot of people <clears throat> really like the album. For me, it's it's their weakest album is Monday Morning Apocalypse. I think, you know, they're, yeah. they're going for a more streamlined, accessible sound. And I, I totally get that. But it's almost like they learned a lesson from that. And like every album they put out since then has been absolutely killer. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, hymns. When I first heard hymns, like I said, it, they 
Ember Gray took it to a new level. And like I said, production wise, uh, video wise, it's still one of my favorite videos, King of Errors. I mean, this band is just on a roll. They're on a great roll. And, you know, I'm always trying to tell people about them. You know, some people are, get into them, some don't. I have a few friends that are really into them too. Uh, I, I've seen them, I've only got to see them uh, two times. So, you know, I, I would love to see them more. Obviously now with the COVID and everything, it's going to be difficult, but, you know, hopefully in the future. Yeah, and they're one of those bands that, uh, you know, for those who are have more of like mainstream taste, right? And they don't really go seek out a lot of these bands that are on the semi underground. Uh, whenever I turn them on to, the, you know, and say, you got to check these guys out. And I, I send them a couple, you know, tracks to listen to. They always are like, wow, that's really good. How have I missed this band, right? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to nowadays. There's just so much out there. Yeah. Uh, but I think these guys just have this, this is it factor that I think any hard rock and metal fan could find something to love in their music, right? Because it's not, you know, it's not extreme, right? So it's got these great unique vocals. The music is heavy enough. It's, it's progressive in spots. It's atmospheric, very melodic, very dramatic. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just great, great music. And uh, Escape of the Phoenix is the brand new one. AFM Records, if you have not heard it yet, please go check it out. I highly recommend it as does Rob, as you can tell. And uh, just a little bit more. Hold on a second. I'll pull out the. Uh, might as well do this too, because I usually do this kind of booklet thing. So as you can see, tons of artwork. I'm sure Rob's got the better version of all of this, but um, yeah, beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. And uh, oh yeah, and there's the band. <laughs> see in Rob's background there, <laughs> even better. So uh, so cool. So yeah. Escape of the Phoenix, AFM Records, go check it out. Uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we are on YouTube all the damn time. I want to thank Rob Lasante for coming on and joining us here today. Uh, I think we could have you back at some point, right? Would you be into it? I'll be into it. Sure. sure. Sounds good. All righty. So uh, take care, everybody. We got uh, Hudson Valley Squares coming up tonight. Uh, so stay tuned for that, as well as a show with Butch Jones and myself talking about some of our favorite hard rock and heavy metal riffs of all time. So uh, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. If you feel like uh, making a donation, hit that Ko-Fi button as well. We've got a merch page. And of course, there's the link to the website so you can check out over 23,000 reviews that we've been doing all these years. So uh, for Rob Lasante, I'm Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody.